A narrative driven game can be a great experience, but a lot of times they just end up missing the mark when it comes to reaching the audience. But there's a brand new one called Wheels of Aurelia that has a big heavy emphasis on replayability with lots of multiple endings and combines visual novel storytelling with a driving like game. But does this game cruise itself to a great experience, or does it just run off the road? Wheels of Aurelia is a narrative game that has a driving mechanic to move its story along. There's a few different branching paths while you're cruising on the road that will change up the story, as well as you get the option to do narrative dialogue with the characters that join you for the trip. It takes place over a very small stretch of area as you're driving through Italy in the late 1970s, and the game does a good job of bringing you into that experience with 1970s Italy-inspired music and, of course, the setting itself. While you're driving along, you do have control of the car. You can weave in and out of traffic or speed up, and doing certain things will cause different dialogue choices to end up coming up, or you will also change up the story a little bit. There's a segment where you'll have to race somebody else or try to get away from the cops as they're chasing you. The game story ends up changing by not only the way you drive, but of course the choices you make in the dialogue with the passengers in your car. While you're driving along, they will say something, and then you get the option to make a rebuttal. You get usually two choices as well as say nothing. You'll have to select them with the square button and then leave it sit for a second. You'll have a bar that will kind of lower, and once it reaches the bottom, you'll then end up saying it. So you get a good amount of time to make sure that you have picked the correct choice. Every time you actually press square to change dialogue choices, it does reset that timer. Though, if you're trying to speed along, you got to also speed along your dialogue, or you may miss out on some of the narrative as it's being told. So sometimes it's best just not to put your pedal to the floor and just let the story unfold. The game features 16 different endings, and while the game itself is only 10 to 20 minutes long in order to complete one run through of it, having those 16 endings, and they are pretty different from one another. The story does take twists and turns, just like the road that you're driving along. You'll have options to pick up hitchhikers and take them along for the ride. You can take the hitchhikers where they want, or you can go the other path and take them not where they were looking to go. There are kind of set things that end up happening each time you end up playing the game, but the way you react and the paths that you end up choosing end up dictating where the roads end up concluding. At the beginning of the game, you do get a choice of your car, and it does affect some of the game as well, as there's also unlockable cars that you can earn as you're playing through the game multiple times. You also get a few different color schemes for the cars that you end up picking from. While I don't want to dive too heavy into the story, the various different paths will lead you more into the backstory of the main character, deal with issues such as love, abortion, terrorism, kidnapping, and various other criminal acts. This is definitely going to be one of those games that is not for everyone. In fact, it may not be for a lot of people. The way that it ends up telling its story is something that I really haven't experienced in a game previously. Just the whole driving mechanics and having to make dialogue choices while you're on your trip is a pretty cool idea. The fact that the game features so many different endings, and they are vastly different from one another. With the very short playtime, you kind of want to play again and decide, well, maybe if I went this way, or maybe if I had made that dialogue choice, what would the end result end up being? If you're somebody who can get into that sort of thing, you're going to love and eat up playing the game over and over and over again. The driving itself, though, is just a means to an end when it comes to the narrative. There's not any penalty for running into other vehicles or going faster or slower other than the small things it dictates within the narrative itself. You can drive sporadic, you can bounce off in the roads back and forth, or you can just speed ahead and not move any directions and just see what ends up happening. In fact, there's even a few trophies for not touching anything or for just speeding along the entire time. From the technical side of things, it ran pretty smoothly. There was only a couple of stutters here and there. There was no crashing of any kind, and honestly, any of the slowdown was very, very brief and definitely didn't take away from the game itself. I liked the music, the music that was made for the game with that 70s feel to it that ends up playing along the radio, as well as the main theme of the game is quite nice. Music that I could definitely end up adding to my video game music playlist. 
The game is available on the PlayStation 4 for $9.99, and it does feature a full trophy list with a platinum. You have to get every one of the game's ending to obtain it, but it definitely has that replayability. Like I said, if you're somebody who loves changing up narratives as you're playing along and seeing where things lead, you're going to really enjoy what Wheels of Aurelia ends up doing. But if you're someone who can't really get into that kind of narrative game, this is one game you're going to want to avoid. In the end, I love the way that the story is told, and I think the game does a good job of putting you in that setting and in that moment for that brief stretch of road that you get to explore throughout the game. I think it does a good job of placing you in that moment. But with all that said, it still is a relatively short experience that is relatively hard to recommend to many other gamers out there. But it is something that if you have a curiosity for a narrative experience like this, it may be worth checking out. I'm going to be giving the game, though, a 6 out of 10. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up this review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.